Good afternoon, everyone. How are you doing? Good. You can, Good. You can come a bit far. Come forward. We want to be together, don't we? <laughs> so it's nice to see you. Welcome. Um, just a little bit about me. My name's Paul Franklin, and I'm one of the uh, directors of WebEx, which is a London-based um, development agency. And I'm also part of the team that work on Arc Extensions, along with Paul Criddle. There's another gentleman called Andrew that's not here. He's, he's, he's going to sit the... Uh, Human exam today, a mark at the back. So, big welcome. A little bit about me, as I said, I'm a father of three. I've got a boy of 10, and he's a good athlete. He wants to be the Olympics, so look out for Ethan Franklin in the future. And I've got some twins of the age of six, and that's just kind of like a, a quick overview. But I've got you for the next 45 minutes, and then what we're going to do, we're going to break out, and in practice, we'll come back for the second bit, and we're going to do a little bit more of a kind of a workshop style. And I'm going to try and make this as fun and as interesting as possible. And uh, what we'll do is we'll leave the questions to the end and, um, and then we can take it from there. So as I said, we've got the first session, which is with me, Elon Editing for Joomla, and making your workflow a breeze. Um, and the second session, as I said, um, we can have a look at how all extensions work together. And uh, you'll also be able to play with it and preview it. And if that wasn't good enough, we're going to give you a free month of everything. Hey, that can't be bad, right? So hopefully, hopefully you enjoy that. Well, I just coming out of the uh, obviously I've been preparing. You've been in the the following lecture, and I'm going to pick up a little bit on that and just think about how we actually make Joomla so much more easier. But you know, what's the story? You see, everything has a story, doesn't it? And I think understanding the story will help you to understand why we believe inline editing is so important to Joomla. And you see, not only was it echoed at the last um, session that we've just come on about how to make the important for Joomla to involve, but even at the first session today, Brian, Brian Tiemann spoke about how to make Joomla easy. And I think that is uh, so important. And for me, it all started with Joomla about 11 years ago, pretty much by chance. And I had a friend who was a business consultant, and uh, he asked me just to kind of build a website for him. So I got out Flash, and I was just kind of getting my heads around it, and I drafted up a website for him. And it was I thought it was good, and it generated a few leads, so it couldn't have been too bad. But um, one of those leads was from a, a training service called Just Resources over West London. And I travelled over to West and I had a coffee with the owner. And as we sat down and we spoke, he said he needed his website to be updatable. And at that point, I knew that my Flash skills and HTML skills wasn't going to cut it. So what do you do in those cases, right? If you want to be a millionaire? Well, you call a friend, right? And so I called this gentleman over here, uh, Mark, and I asked him, what was the best CMS? Now, I'm sure everybody here is going to say, or thinking of Joomla, right? <laughs> well, okay, I'll give you the options. A, WordPress, B, Joomla, there you are, C, Jupel, or D, Mambo. Anyone has it, I guess? Well, anyway, sorry? 11 years ago. Yes, 11 years ago. There it is. There it is. There are a million pounds to the man in the front. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, but it was, it, it, it was Mambo. And so, yes, our first website was in Mambo. And in 2005, when the fork happened, Mark and myself, we decided to take a punt, right? And it looked like a punt at that time. And you've got this long established uh, Mambo system, and Joomla had just come out. And I remember having that conversation with him, and we just said, well, look, let's just go for it. And we set up WebEx and specializing in Joomla. And I remember back there, things were crazy. You know, as we started get going, we was having inquiries, up to seven inquiries every single day. People just wanted self-manageable websites, and the fact is we couldn't keep up. But I also would say that though in those days, most of the inquiries were the bottom end of the market, the cheap um, DIY kind of market. And so a lot of those projects were like, can you build me a website for £50? <laughs> like, and I think a lot has changed over the last 11 years. And the Joomla market has certainly changed as we've been looking. And, uh, but people still want self-manageable websites, but they want them to be easy to use. And this is what inline editing is all about and why we think it's so important. You see, the fact is more often than not, IT isn't intuitive. 
because it's not natural to our environment. I mean, for instance, if you go to the supermarket, right, people will go to the grocery or, or the fruit stand, they'll pick up an apple, they check it, look for bruises, they interact with it, they feel, don't they? But when it's IT, it's all kind of like, or doom, it's all on the screen. It doesn't have any kind of, and they've got to navigate through these different kind of screens and menus and stuff like that. And even, you know, Brian showed us how we can improve the workflow, but a lot of these things are just not natural, are they? So anyone wants an apple, there's one here. And uh, all in all, it can be a little bit disconcerting for the end user. But I, I just want to show you a few different types of editing and why I think that inline editing is different. Why I think it is revolutionary, different from any other kind of editing. So here is an example of pop-up editing. And this is an uh, easy blog. I don't know if anybody's used that. And uh, you can see the site administrator site administrator has this kind of edit icon and they click on that and it pops up now it's not in the same kind of screen it's in a different screen so it can be a little bit unfamiliar for your end user right because they've just been at this web page now boom they're in this kind of editing screen you can see that the uh, the styling looks different doesn't it within an editor this is another one popular one can you can you uh, anyone use this system before the MailChimp icon on the top might kind of give you a clue, but this is often used for site builders, uh, um, where basically the right side is automatically updated. And I think Uthemes Pro, they've kind of adopted a kind of similar kind of system like this. Now this is something a little bit more closer. This is called in-place editing, okay? And it allows you to update editable elements within a page or form, as you can see here. But this doesn't allow you to add new elements as such, it's kind of locked down and fixed. And the fact is, all of these things have got us where we are today, but they're not true inline editing. Now, here's an example of inline editing from Wix.com. We've probably all been on YouTube and got those millions of adverts every single time you go. You have to bear a Wix.com advert. <laughs> anyone, anyone have that? But you can see that inline editing is radically different because it embodies the idea that we no longer need an admin screen. And this makes it super easy for the user because they can just touch and edit. They can actually edit things within the original page with all the surrounding content and it remains intact and they don't need to navigate away. And this is how really updating your website should be because it's natural. We're able to have feedback and see and interact with the elements that we've changed. So following on, where is Joomla? Well, if I'm honest, I don't think that we've given a great, a great deal of thought to the matter. And this is still fairly new in Joomla. And this is one of the reasons why we are here today. You know, we've had to do a lot of work on our side to bring in our editing to Joomla, but I'm hoping that we can change this. But before I get there, I just want to feel, show you a few stats on why I believe inline editing is so important and why I think it's vital for Joomla. So here's some Google Trends, okay? I don't want to get you too depressed again, but you can see Joomla starts up there at 100% value. And you see that um, Wix.com, which I'm comparing, which is an online web builder, starts off, I think it's about 25, 26, 27. And you can kind of see over the duration of the five years, they're pretty much crisscrossed, haven't they? You see, Joomla's gone down and Wix has gone up. Now, I don't want to put too much on that because of like stats, statistics, and politics, right? We all know those things. But I believe the rise of online site builders like Wix is a key factor, a big key factor, and has taken away from the cheap budget websites. And in fact, if you look at Google Trends over the last five years, and let's compare the giants, Joomla, WordPress, and Jupyter, you see that all mainstream CMSs have dropped down. But perhaps the most resilient, which is WordPress at the top, okay, has been able to retain its market. Um, because I think of WordPress.com, it's very much like a site builder, isn't it? You go to the website, you can choose your template, choose your, your name, and it works like that. And so it really has appealed to that kind of easy to use, uh, bottom end of the market kind of user. Well, Joomla being positioned between WordPress and our friends Jupel down there, 
has been hit the hardest because I think because it's been between the bottom end and the top end of the market and we can see there's the cheap quick easy to use users have moved on to site builders however in saying that right I still believe Joomla has a great place for medium to large projects because of its flexibility power and because it's relatively easy to use and even our Google Trends here kind of just show you Joomla and the upturn um, but I'd also say that's really been echoed in our business. We don't have the cheap websites inquiring. We have in much more big websites and much more bigger builds um, that come to us. And uh, this is the path I think Joomla needs to be heading down. Because, you know, people are going to want to automate their businesses more and more online. And so there's no reason, I don't think, that we have to die out just yet following on to the next lecture, okay? Because people are gonna want to automate their, their systems. We've just just recently done a project for a, a US company and where they literally wanted, uh, it, it was for, for booking sports events, okay? And they wanted to automate everything. So it, the whole thing's right down to their accounts and this is where people are moving. So there's a real place, I think, for, for Joomla. But I think it has it's got to evolve. And also, if we look at the, um, the best performer, the most resilient CMS, and um, to the upturn of online site builders, we can see that WordPress has already got a collection of inline editing plugins. Okay, and now CMS such as Impress Page, Inline CMS, Surreal CMS are all jumping on the bandwagon. So it's clear that the industry is moving in this in this direction. So back to the question: Where is Joomla? Well. If you could have Joomla with inline editing, we would have something powerful and easy to use, right? Now, I'm not saying that we've been able to work this all out because this has kind of been an, an ongoing mission for ourselves as well. We've had to really kind of deal with some of the limitations with Joomla on the front end. But what we are saying is that we're doing our best, not just to complain about it, but to provide something and something that I know that our users want. For instance, we've just um, just had a big inquiry with regards to a church, and they've got different um, parts of the church, and what they want is a really simple, easy uh, front-end solution where people can just go and log in and update on the front. People don't need to know what the system is, do they? They just want it to work. So the back-end administrator can deal with all the day-to-day -day technical stuff, but they want something that the average Joe Blogs can just log in and update, add new pages and new articles, create events, and, and just literally touch and edit. And so there's a real place, a real need for inline editing. So here is a demo of our own ARC inline editing. Okay. And I've done it on animated GIFs so that we kind of uh, get away from kind of technical issues. So here you can see this is. Um, module editing and you can disable and enable it with the toolbar on the side so okay we'll start from here and this is Joomla site and you can literally touch and edit update your headings your titles your text your images your media files and this works for articles and custom HTML modules we can browse find new files click and insert or upload as well a click of a button and update you can also um, interact with tabs and content live within your browser so you can go from one tab to another to the third one you don't need to uh, go into the source code to try and move it across or some kind of complicated admin screen so we can start even interacting with um, some kind of widgets now, you can drag and drop upload images and it will automatically resize your images. So you can actually set a parameter of how wide you want that. You can, and also that works for PDF documents as well. So your clients don't need to have even use the file manager. They can just drag and drop and upload. And the thing is, is when you jump from one module to another module, it's not quite like you're working within an editor because 
When you're working with like Microsoft Word, you make a mistake, you can press undo and undo. But when you click from one module to another, you actually save an instance of that to the database. So what we've done is we've tied it into um, module versioning so that we can, you can go back and revert it. And these are some of the things that we've had to, you know, think through, you know, as to actually make it workable within Joomla. And so perhaps you think this is a bold statement, but as I said, I think this is the future of all client-side websites. And to get this moving, we've developed our own inline editing framework, and it's open source, and, uh, and it's free. And that supports Joomla components because they have editor, um, editable views. And so far, using this technology, we've been able to extend this to Zoo, so content construction kit, Flexi Content, which is another content construction kit, and Joomla intro and full images um, parameters within third parties. Lots of templates now have their own frameworks. And so we've been able to do that. And finally, we've been able to support custom fields. And this supports the text, the um, text area, media for uploading your images, the integer tab, which is for numbers, and the editors tab as well. So how does this work? Well, first, we needed to find a way of modifying Joomla without hacking the core components, such as Joomla's article manager. So the question is, how can you achieve this? Well, Joomla gives us certain hooks, right? Such as systems and content plugins, which is really helpful. And this allows us to grab the HTML content in the database and display it out in line. But on the flip side, this has also been our greatest headache uh, with the Joomla system today. The problem arises when it comes to editing content in line because how the text looks in your web page isn't necessarily how it looks within your Joomla database. This is because we can have lots of clever things going on with, with Joomla content plugins such as JavaScript, transformation, animation, we've got events, which all means that the resulted text isn't necessarily how it's going to look in your database. Let me give you a little bit of an uh, example of this. So this is how it works, and this is an illustration. We have our content plugin over here, and it is listening and scanning for its placeholder, which is stored in the database. And when it finds this, this placeholder, click, it transforms it into whatever it meant to be. That could be a, a banner or something on your website, or it could be a media player, tabs, content. The list can go on, the possibilities. Now let's say somebody has a light box gallery with a bunch of certain events, right? The problem here is that these events could easily be lost and not easily reattached after inline editing, i.e. After, after the user has finished editing a particular, particular piece of content. Now we could refresh the page to get it back, but that would kind of defeat the purpose of inline hat editing. We want it just to happen live, right? So if you've ever used um, or videos. If you use that plugin, Bayform is plugin for Joomla, you will know that it has this same syntax tag here. And uh, you need to use that to get the media player work. And in fact, let's be honest, there's hundreds of Joomla plugins like that. And on the front end, do a bit of magic. Hey presto, we've got this classy looking media player up and running. Well, that's okay until your client goes along right or excited about the latest inline editing technology and boom it disappears and you get your client crying down the phone you know why is this why has it disappeared it was a it was a media player now it's coming to a piece of text so so what can we do about it okay that's a serious problem well probably um what needs to happen is the joomla to develop uh, a kind of a framework for content plugins and even on our side, um, we've got some ideas of perhaps how we can surround it with widgets. The, the arc editor allows for widgets. So we've, we've got some ideas. But what the question is, what can we do today? Well, ever since we've had HTML5, which isn't new, we've had browser side, browser side support for the audio and video elements. And this is supported by all mainstream web browsers, which is great news. So let's take a look at this. And you see, and what's really cool here is that this stuff actually retains its form when editing and it lets us preview we can upload insert play and edit your audio and media files live in your browser doesn't turn to a syntax code you can even inline edit it no complicated 
syntax tags or placeholders are in need anymore. And when you think about it, we only really needed to use content plugins to do media stuff because we didn't have HTML5 back in the day and we'd try and put the media player in some kind of flash, something like that. Well, so what else can we do? Well, we have um, frameworks such as Bootstrap and UIKit. Actually, we can do most things as these libraries are the building blocks of your websites, right? So for instance, you only need to open up your web browsers, develop a console and look at something like WidgetKit, right? And you'll see that underneath WidgetKit, it's made up from UIKit. Or you might look at another extension and you do the same and you see that underneath the other extension it's made up by Bootstrap, right? So why do we always need to hide these elements within a content plugin? You see? And the thing is, as we know, as the editor knows what Bootstrap and UIKit is doing, we can actually reattach these events, which is very exciting. Because the first time the user can interact with their content live, they can click on a tab, edit it, switch to another tab. Okay. And this can work for tabs, accordions, galleries, carousels, which all can work in line. Pretty cool, eh? Pretty fun stuff. So you might say, well, how do we manage, how do we manage widgets then? Like, for instance, um, surely we need some sort of admin to add new instances to a tab or something like this. But it's something that we've been working on, again, over the last few months. Okay, and using jQuery, we can add, edit, and rearrange and delete bootstrap tabs. So you can see he can just drag and drop. No need for an administrator from admin at all anymore. And, and really, you can see that we are, or I am, certainly really excited about this because this is a new front frontier, if you want to say, with inline editing. Actually, now we can start doing a lot of stuff that is all hidden away within complicated views in components, and we can do it on the page and live. So this is more than just editing your audio videos. We can actually start interacting with um, some real live widgets. And it means that we can actually start to lose the admin altogether. And finally, we've been um, developing our own inline editing template. And this gives us better control over views, ability to inline edit menus, a better management over the placement of our editor's toolbar. We've got a new editor's toolbar. The only reason we had to put it on the side side was because a lot of templates would reserve the top for the menu and they'd have some kind of footer on the bottom and so there wasn't any space for the editor but if we were able to work on our own templates we have better control instead of like fighting with anybody and so in summary um, we can take inline entity to another level by creating the foundation that works with us rather than battling with third parties but I also think that Joomla really need to take a look at this. Well, hopefully you found this insightful. You've got lots of things going off in your mind. And that's what I wanted to do. And uh, I would just like to... Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'm going to invite Paul and Mark. Well, we can just have a group discussion about any questions that you would like to... Just like to throw at us. None? You found it interesting, right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's extremely timely, I think, you know, having done this, because mm. it's, it's the way everything's going, you know. And it is, yeah. Uh, 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 you have other sessions about uh, this as well? Yep, in the second session, we're going to, um, basically, uh, we've got some staging sites set up, and uh, what we'll do is... We're going to walk through it. We're going to walk through it with you, yeah. and just... Yeah. And just show you how it works. We've got lots of um, live sites and you can just get a feeling, feeling of how it actually works. You can log in with your computer or we can do it online and, uh, and so you just get a feel of it. You know, there's something about um, seeing it on a screen but there's something different to get the kind of feedback. Yeah, yeah. As we talk about in the supermarket, right? 
Yeah. So yeah, so, so so we're happy to do that, and you can give us feedback. We're, as I said, we're learning. So um, this is very much of a kind of a mission, if you want to say, for us, rather than we're coming here and saying, "Hey, we've got something perfect sorted out." I think what we're we're learning, and um, we're we're going into new territory, um, and, and and as we get there, you know, we're having to think about how we're going to manage content plugins and how we're going to do these different things. So it's very much kind of you know experimental but it's also really fun especially when you come up with ability to yeah, yeah. you know to think about how we're going to get over problems like editing widgets and things like that anything else right yeah and most people and let's be honest everybody can use Microsoft Word so if you can use Microsoft Word yeah even your grandma can do it this <laughs> is not sure so I don't know do you want to um, look or we get ready for the next session and you can hang around or you can quickly grab a coffee and, and, we're, and we'll come back and, and then we'll take it from there but thank you very much and uh, you can and you apply your changes as you're doing it yeah. live, and that appears live on the website. That sort of yeah, yeah, that's right. There's yeah. No, yeah, yeah, I can do that. And that's sort of just, there's no sort of intermediate stage well, at all. Well, when you're editing, okay, mm -hmm. you are, it's not until you click off, right, is it safe? Okay, so you sort of, you yeah, 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 yeah. So, so if you yeah. do a spelling mistake, it's not going to come up. To you. Right, so it's like to a published thing. I mean, I, I'm sure you've yeah. used for um, reference you know, some of the other um, things that have come out over the last say, yeah. few years. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, so that's like a sort of, sort of clear uh, you know, publish or whatever some of these other ones. So. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yes, I'm happy. Thank you very much. Give that technical man a round of applause as well. Yeah. These are the kind of people that get moaned at and never thanked. <laughs>